Hi everyone. So, you may have noticed I've got a little toy here, a new toy. This is my new microphone in response to Wesley saying repeatedly that he could not hear what I was saying. So, I fixed that now. There's no excuse for anyone to not hear what I'm saying. I've got a microphone now. So there we go. Wonderful, high-quality sound coming straight to you over my YouTube channel. Right, so... What am I talking about today? Why am I saying anything today? Well, I am going to be talking today about themes. Now, what are themes, you may ask? Well, they are, in some ways, a bit like blockings. They are information metabolism elements being put together, um, or cognitive functions, as the Myers-Briggs lot tend to say, being put together. But there's a difference now. They're not naturally intermeshing on a metaphysical level. There's no stuff made out of themes in the same way that blockings actually make up existence as it's presented to us. Now, themes are more about when certain information elements or cognitive functions are pushed together as a sort of value. That leads to a sort of claim being made um, on a certain virtue, a certain thing, which is a point of contention between different types. And that's what leads to intertype relationships being ones which clash more as opposed to ones which complement more. So this is the source of some of the clashes, you could say. So these themes, what are they made up of? They're made up of, up of information elements um, or cognitive functions. But specifically, it's relating to the um, dominant or leading function and the mobilizing or tertiary function, which I'll go into more in future videos. And so these are the ones which are sort of being pushed. These are the pushed values. And the idea, if you go further into it, by pushing these, you are rejecting the inverse of it. And the inverse come from what one can call the vulnerable and ignoring functions, what BB tends to call the trickster or oppositional functions. So by pushing these these virtues, you are um, these themes. Um, you are essentially acting against or um, subverting the inverse theme. You could say. So, for instance, um, any and FE. If that's being pushed as a theme, the inverse theme is going to be NI and FI. So that's the idea. They don't block together. They're not forming part of our world. It's not a block. It's not a molecule. It's more of two things together leading to an overall effect. So let's get into it. So the first one I want to cover uh, is um, NE, so extroverted intuition, and extroverted feeling, FE. So what happens when those two come together to form a theme? Well, and first of all, this is something which is going to be shared by both the ENTP and the ESFJ. It's very much what they have in common, what they're both pushing, you could say. So what are they pushing? It is um, essentially um, taking what I call a affirming view towards a certain virtue. And what is this virtue? It is decency. It is goodness. They're taking an affirming view towards goodness. So what does, what does that mean? So what I mean by that is these are the two most optimistic of all the types. These are the ones who, when you ask them a question, make a request of them, let's say, they will have a very strong default answer. And where the answer is either a yes or a no, their strong default is going to be yes. It's not going to be no, unless they have a very good reason to say no. They lean very strongly, more than any of the other types, towards saying yes to things, to seeing what is good in things, to seeing what are the positives, what are the great things that can come out of this. These are types which are very much about their enthusiasm for new things coming in, for alternative possibilities being offered. So they're going to say yes. And it is an affirmative yes. It is a yes because they want to express that, that positivity, which is the FE coming in, with, uh, with NE, with the openness to new ideas, to alternative ideas, to more and more possibilities being offered. 
They want more, as many of those possibilities to come into the fold as possible. They are bringing more and more and more things in. They are very inviting, very much about tolerating all these different things and essentially putting a positive spin in it all and conveying that, that enthusiasm to others to get other people excited about these alternative ways of looking at things and doing things. Um, novelty, perhaps, is where I said any is not always about novelty. But in this case, it is a lot to do with that idea of the new, exciting, fresh thing to bring on and to get involved with and to try out and to test and to and to um, and to roll out for others to enjoy with you. Very much what both the ENTP and ESFJ are about. Whether it's about say coming up with new activities to do and everyone doing that together, more sort of ESFJ. Or come up with ideas and, and, and possibilities that are very intriguing to talk about, where you want an audience to listen to you to find out about this and to then react very positively to that new thing. So, again, very much about saying yes to things, to responding in the affirmative to things. Because the idea is that um, uh, the default is that things, new things, uh, alternative things coming in are good. They are not bad. And we need a reason to think that they are bad and they are to be um, rejected. No. Most of the time, these types will be saying yes, not no. And that can cause problems when interacting with other types. And those other types we'll be talking about in just a bit. All right? So that is uh, the theme of any um, extrovert intuition and effie, extroverted feeling being put next to one another.